Um, hi, Franco. Welcome to class. Hello, hello. I hope you had a wonderful, wonderful weekend. It's not so bad. Not so bad. Good. Especially after our last, um, when I saw you last week, because we were at the excursion, which I think you didn't come to. So we were able to also, when we learn English, be out somewhere and practice learning English, which is good. Um, but yes, good. Glad to hear you had a great weekend. Let's get back into our class. We were just talking about possessions. So possessions are like objects or things that we own. And we can, you know, we can talk about a book, a laptop, a phone, but it's interesting to say maybe a color. We can add an adjective to it and say what color it is. Um, and what we can do is also say where it is. So we can say, you know, in this room, there is a chair, there are tables, um, there is a book, um, there are whiteboards, there are pens. So we can also talk about what there is and also talk about its location. So maybe is the object on the table? Is it beneath the table? Is it behind something? Um, is it, hey Edward, is it um, on the desk? Is it between the shelves? Is it on the left of something? So we can also talk about its location. Where is it in the building, the room, whatever? Um, so that's what we'll be doing today. And also just, yeah, talking about objects, possessions, and going into knowing our nouns, singular and plural. So making sure that we understand uh, when we do need to say that it's plural, connecting the sentence very well. So for example, there are many books on the table. So that's a sentence with plural objects, um, not just the objects, but talking about their location. So that's what we'll be doing in this class. Um, let's get back into the class. So I was, we just looked at this image about the photograph, the family, and what they have. So let's look at some useful objects. Some useful objects. Um, sorry, a place called home. So we have here an article that we're going to read together. And we're looking at four families. And this is a photograph of their home, inside their home, in their living room, or their family room, or their lounge. That's all the same words. And we're talking about what they have in there. Okay, so four different families um, in their place, their apartment. So let's have a look. We've got... Um, the article, let's read it together and then we'll answer the questions. So I'll read first and then you can repeat after me. So the title is A Place Called Home. These four families, so you can repeat after me, are from Seoul, South Korea. Their apartments are in the Evergreen Tower. There are 25 floors and every apartment is the same. There is a living room, a kitchen, a bathroom, and there are two bedrooms. In all the photos, there are parents and children. There is always a sofa on the right, and there are pictures on the walls. But there are some differences. For example, there isn't a rug in every apartment, and the colour and style of the furniture is different. Okay, so we have some questions. I'll give you a moment to read it again for yourself. We need to put an S 
for the same and D for different. So these four families, are they in the same country? Yes, because it said they're from South Korea, so yes. Um, are they in the same or do they have the same apartment? Uh, I would say yes, because it says every apartment is the same. So yes, that just means it's got the same number of rooms, the same number of bathrooms. They look alike. They're very similar. They're the same. Is the number of the rooms the same? Yes, it says there are two bedrooms. Is the furniture the same? No, the furniture for the four families is different. And are the pictures on the walls the same? No, they're different. Okay, so I will give you a moment to reread it and do question four. We're going to see which apartment, one, two, three, and four, has these possessions or these objects. So I'll read them and we can talk about what they are. So sofa, another word for a sofa is a couch um, or a lounge chair, an armchair. If you don't know what they are, just quickly Google them, armchair. Chair, television, or you can say TV, desk, lamp, computer, pictures, blinds, curtains, cupboards and drawers, rug, plant, and carpet. Okay, so they are objects or they are furnitures that you can find in any home. They're very common. Um, we need these objects. It's very, it makes, you know, the lounge room, the bedroom, they can be part of the, um, the study room, the office room. Um, okay, I'll give you a moment to reread the article and answer question four, and then we'll come back. Now what's really interesting is when we start saying where is the object, um, sorry, before I say where it is, is is it there? Like is it, um, can we see it? If it is, we say there is for a singular object, that means only one, or a plural object, we say there are. So this is giving a positive statement to say, yes, there is a desk, there is a laptop, there is a screen, there is a whiteboard. It's a positive statement. I'm showing you, I'm telling you that I can see this object. So when I do that, so when I do that, um, as I said, I can show that I want to show that there is something. So when I say there is, I must put... Um, an article in front of the noun. Now, this is an indefinite article, and this one is the definite article. Do you remember a couple of lessons ago we learnt about using the? We know when to say it and when not to say it. So when it's singular, I'm talking about one object, I must put one of these words before the noun. So there is a laptop. There is a desk. There is a whiteboard. Now, if it's plural, that means that there's more than one, there's many. I have to say there are. And I must put one of these words or something very similar before. I can say many, several, a few, some, and then the noun. So I'm talking about many now. So I could say there are many books, there are many chairs in this room, there are many pens on the table, there are many students in class. Okay, so I'm talking about a noun and if it's singular or if it's plural and to show, yes, it's positive, there is this, I can see it, it's here. Now, if it's negative, 
I just add the word not. So, for example, there is not a book, uh, a table. But I don't say, um, I can say there is not a table, or I can, I can say is not, I can connect it to the verb is and say there isn't. So remember when we contract, we connect two words together. So now it's there isn't a table in the room. There isn't um, a screen. There isn't speakers. There isn't um, a whiteboard. But I can put any. There isn't any tables. There isn't any um, textures. There isn't any um hand sanitizer there isn't any something now if it's plural there aren't any something so there aren't any tables in the room there aren't any plants in the room there aren't any windows maybe for example okay so that's now saying a negative talking about the possession or the object but saying there isn't there aren't we can make a question so i want to know is there a table in the room so usually when you book a hotel that's when you need to use this that's probably the most common or if you buy a house um is there any um and i need to use any as well here um, so that's for singular, but if it's plural, are there any? Um, are there any windows? Are there any um, balconies in this apartment? Are there any something? Or a very simple question is how many? Uh, how many bathrooms are there? How many tables are there? How many screens are in the room? Okay, so some example is, is there a park nearby, close to your home? Is there a bus stop next to your college? So you could see I'm asking a question if something is there. That's for singular, plural, are there many markets near your home? Are there many, um, many public transportations near your home? Are there many students in your class? Are there many Colombians in Adelaide? See, so I can ask a question. And if you wanna answer, you say for singular, yes, there is. Or if it's plural, no, uh, sorry, yes, there are. Now, if you wanna answer and it's negative, no, there isn't. Or, no, there aren't. Okay, so that's how we talk about there is and there are. So if I look at my textbook, I could say there's a living room. So maybe you're talking about your home. In my home, there's a living room. Uh, there are two bedrooms. There isn't a table. There aren't any beds. And I want to ask someone, is there a sofa? Yes, there is. No, there isn't. Are there any pictures? Yes, there are. No, there aren't. How many pictures are there? There are three. So let's answer some question. Is the noun singular or plural after there is? Is the noun singular or plural after there is? Singular. Is the noun singular or plural after there are? Plural. What word usually comes after there aren't or are there? There aren't. Are there any? 
So when you make a question, or if you say plural, there aren't, sorry, a negative, there aren't, then you have to put any before the noun. So here's some sentences. Number six, there's a sofa. There's a sofa. So I'm showing you there's a sofa. There is a sofa. Now you can connect is to the word there and it becomes there's a sofa. There's or there is a rug in this apartment. So singular, a rug, only one. There is a rug in this apartment. There is a TV in this apartment. There is a balcony in this apartment. There is a, a window in this apartment. Yeah? There are, plural, there are five people in this apartment. There are five families in this building block. There are five or well, four students in this room. The next one is a negative. And we know we have to put any for negatives. So there aren't any curtains. This is true for this room. There aren't any curtains on the window. It's the same as saying, you know, there is no curtains. Or there are no curtains, sorry. Number five, it's a question. So you must start with the verb to be, to make a question. So is there a television? Is there a couch? It's singular, so I'm only asking about one. Is there a walk-in wardrobe? Is there a bathroom in your home? Is there a bus stop near your home? Is there... To answer, yes, there is. Singular. You got to make sure if the question is singular, your answer is singular. Next one, it's a plural. Are there any chairs or lamps? No, there aren't. You could put any. No, there aren't any. Or you could just stop at no, there aren't. So if you hear the question with any, you can put it in your response. Are there any Peruvian students in your class? No, there aren't any. Are there any um, El Salvadorians in your class? No, there aren't any. Or no, there aren't. How many pictures are there? So another way to make a question. So the first one, you start with the verb to be. Maybe it's singular or plural, or how many. So how many and then the noun. How many pictures, how many people, how many books, how many laptops are there? There are two. So again, I'm making sure my plural is the same in the question and the same in the answer. And are there any books? So plural question. No, there aren't. If it was a positive, yes, there are. So some more examples. There aren't any lamps in this room. I can't see that there aren't any lamps. Uh, Fo said there is a laptop, yes. Yep, there is my laptop. There is a laptop. There are many chairs. There is a projector. So I said this one before. So a projector is like uh, a, uh, a machine which is connected to the laptop which puts your screen onto your computer screen onto the um, onto the screen. So there is a projector. There is a carpet. On the floor, there is a carpet. And there is one speaker. Okay, good.
Good. So now we talked about using there is and there are to show that I can see something or if it's a negative, there isn't or there aren't. And then I can ask a question. Is there? Are there? How many? But now I want to show where are they located in the room? It's location. Where is it? So I can use words called preposition of place. And it's little words like in, on, next to or beside, under, above, between, behind, in front of, or facing, opposite, or the same word as saying across. Yes. Th these, we now have this the same. On the left, on the right, in the middle. Okay, so let's have a look at them. What do they look like? This is in. So maybe my book is in the drawer. It's got to be inside something. So you're talking about this object. It's inside something else. So you have to say what? My book is in the drawer. My pens are in the cupboard. Something could be on. Maybe my laptop is on my desk. Um, you can find my, you can find your test on my desk. Next to. So again, you must say, what is the second object? So my book is next to uh, Maria's table or my laptop is next to my water bottle. Under, so for example, my, my, um, my book is under my desk. Above, so the lights are above us. Um, the projector is above the table. Between or in the middle. So um, there are some chairs between Fo and Eloise. So you can see I'm always mentioning the second object as well, not just the book is between, the book is under, the book is above, but I'm saying what that second object is. Behind. So um, my, yeah, behind. Yeah, in the back. So behind me. Um, my desk or my, uh, I don't know, my book is behind me. In front of. So something is in front of me and opposite means like two people are looking at each other. And some other prepositions of place is on the left, on the right, and in the middle. That's what they look like. Okay, so if I look at apartment four, back the, on the page, apartment four, let's do this together. There are, so remember that's plural, there are two pictures, something on the wall. What do you think? There are two pictures on the wall. We say something is on the wall. The clock is on the wall. Yeah. The... Um, PowerPoint is on the wall. You have a PowerPoint next to you. It's on the wall. And the sofa is under them. There's a TV opposite the sofa. Remember, in front of, opposite. And there's a plant next to the TV. There's a large rug on the right. The family is in front of the window. So if you look at the picture, the family is in front of the window. The parents are behind the children. Okay, let's do number 10 together.
Um, the family is something of the room. So we're looking at apartment one now. The family is something in the room. What do you think for apartment one? The family is in the middle of the room. They are they are in between the TV and the sofa. Negative, there isn't a rug in this apartment. There's a picture under it, uh, sorry, on the wall. Yep, yeah, there's a picture on the wall on the right. And the sofa is under it. The computer is on the desk. And there's a lamp next to the computer. So now you're going to write about your room in your home. Now you can make it up or it could be a true room in your home. Now the room doesn't have to be a bedroom. You can talk about your living room, your lounge room, your kitchen. You can talk about your um, games room, uh, whatever. So write about a room in your home. Let's read some examples. There's lots of examples here. So this is good for you to read other people's comments um, to practice your English. So Juanita says, in my room, there is a carpet which has a bed on it. There is one cupboard and two bedside tables. There aren't any pictures or curtains. So you can see she used positive sentences and then she used negative. Um, and she showed us where are they located in the room. So Jonathan, in my bedroom, there is a bed on the right, a desk in front of the bed, and a laptop on the desk. On the left of the door are two closets. In front of the door is a big window with a blind, and on the floor is a carpet. Okay, so try and add different um, furniture. Try and think of different furniture. So maybe you can talk about um, a clothes um, hanger. Okay, so maybe in your room, again, you don't have to pick a bedroom. Maybe you have a clothes hanger. Okay, something like this to hang your clothes. Um, maybe some other vocabs for furniture, a fan. Maybe you have a fan. Maybe a bar fridge. That's like a small little fridge. Plants, books, shelves, DVD player, um, wardrobe, coat, rack. So a coat hanger. You can talk about so I have one of these. You can talk about a coat hanger in your room. I'll just show you an image. This one, coat hanger. Um, you also have a desk. So I want vocab that we don't know, uh, we haven't used before. Key holder, somewhere where you put your keys. Um, if you think of any other furniture, that is not what we've said before. Try to use it. Try to make it up so that you could practice saying what there is in your room. Okay, so I'll give you a moment to write and tell us what is in your room. Okay, so I can see some writings. We were talking about writing about objects, possessions, things that are ours in our room. So Franco wrote this the kitchen we say in the kitchen in my house is big there are three windows 
two to the right and one to the left. Good. There is a big table in front of the kitchen island with four chairs. There is a great couch on the right with a big TV in front of it. Um, I don't know what you mean by great couch. Great is usually an expression of something like, oh, the day is great. Um, maybe, I don't know why you would say a couch is great. There is a comfy. Because it's great. Because <laughs> <laughs> it feels comfortable to be in. Maybe comfy. We usually, when we talk about a couch, we say, oh, there's a comfy couch. Um, that couch looks so comfortable. You just want to sit, relax, put your feet up. So maybe comfy. It's a bit strange to say great. Like I said, great is more like, wow, the day is fantastic. The day is great. I'm feeling great. Um, he's a great person. Um, this is a great book. But about a couch, the only thing I could say great is that it's such a great design. Whoever designed this couch, it has a great design. Like it's a great, but it's, yeah, really strange to say great couch. So more like comfy. There is a comfy couch on the right with a big TV in front of, in front. Again, we need to say where, like in the second object, object in front of it. So even when you talk about the second object, you can say, because you mentioned it before, we know that when we need to repeat a second, uh, an object, we can say it if it's singular or them. So because you said there is a comfy couch on the right with a big TV in front of it, in front of the couch. So I don't want to repeat in front of the couch. So in front of it. Um, that's really good. I'll just read it again to connect it well. So the kitchen in my house, so we, we know how to say it's in, the kitchen in my house, the lounge room in my home, um, the bedroom in my parents' home, whatever. So we say in my house is big. There are three windows, two to the right and one to the left. There is a big table in front of the kitchen island. Yes, so kitchen island is a very good word. Thank you for introducing us, Franco, to a new um, uh, vocab of furniture. Now, a kitchen island, or you can say a kitchen bench, um, is this. So it's like this table part in the kitchen, so where you can you have more room. So it's not against the wall. It's usually like separated. You see it comes out into the middle of the kitchen. So that's called a kitchen bench or, as Franco said, a kitchen island uh, with four chairs. Maybe I could say four chairs around it. Again, just to get you to practice, um, you know, it and then around it. There is a comfy couch on the right with a big TV in front of it. Good. Thank you for sharing. Any questions that you had with, with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Sebastian says, in my room, there is a desk, a chair, and a computer. Perfect. So he connected single uh, objects. He's only talking about one now. There is a desk, a chair, and our computer. The bed is in the middle of the room in front of the window with a view of the garden. Nice. I like that. When you when your bedroom, it gives it more of a relaxed feeling. Yeah. With a view of the garden. On top of the desk, I find the schedule of activities and pictures of my girlfriend. Yeah. So I just will change this a little bit. Um, on top of now the desk, it's like you're talking about a general desk, but when it's yours on top of my desk is a bit better because the, you know, it's just a bit general. So on top of my desk, um, we want to practice there is. So on top of my desk is my schedule of activities and pictures of my girlfriends. Really good. Thank you for sharing that. Um, 
Okay, so that's Sebastian's Edward. It's a little bit short, <laughs> but let's have a look. In my room, there's a comfy bed. Good. So whenever something is very comfortable and relaxing, we say comfy. It could be a comfy couch, a comfy bed, a comfy, um, you could just say the whole room is like the house is very comfortable. It's got a comfortable feeling. So in my room, there's a comfy bed, a desk with books and a laptop. So a desk with books and a laptop on it. Posters on the walls. And also there's a rug in front of my bed. So again, just making sure my bed, in front of my bed. Good. Uh, Fo, did you upload? If yes, you uploaded. Okay, we'll look at Fo and then uh, Eloise. So um, let's have a look. Fo says, in my room, there is a table and a chair, a bed and a wardrobe. On the table, there is a computer and some books. Perfect. Good. Yeah. Okay, Eloise, we have with uh, Dickerson. Yep. Well, thank you. In a room, yes. There, there is a chest of drawers. 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 There's a chest of drawers. Yeah. Yep. So in my room, there's a chest of drawers. Wardrobe. A, a wardrobe. A bed. A bed. Two bedsides. Two bedside tables. Yes. Uh, a large window. Yes. A, a large window. I would say with a curtain because it's kind of, it, it comes like it's with it. So it's a large window with curtains. Yep. There are pictures on the wall. Yeah, there are pictures on the wall. And next to the door, there is a porch rack. And next to the what? Door. And next to the door is a coat rack. Yes. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Thank you for telling us about your room. So that's how we talk about what there is. That means what we can see as a positive thing. Um, no one used a negative. So maybe you could have added, um, but there isn't a fan or but there isn't a window, or but there isn't a desk or something. So we can also add a negative. Um, yes, really good. Okay, so let's have a break. And when we come back, we're going to be talking about useful objects. So um, more about objects that we can find in a backpack or a rucksack. A rucksack is just a backpack, more for like activities when you go hiking or skiing. Um, and we're really going to look at singular and plural again, making sure that we can understand when do we put the plural and the pronunciation. So books, TVs, um, chairs. So really pronouncing the plural S. And also, um, you know, saying this is, that is, those are, these are. Okay, so we'll do that after the break. Okay, so we've got an interview with Andy. We know that andytorbet.com, this is his website, and he has some activities, climbing, diving, kayaking. So we're going to listen to someone interviewing this man. So you're going to find out where is the interviewer with Andy? Where's Andy from? Which country? Where is he from? And which objects are in his rucksack? So remember, a rucksack is a little bit different to a backpack. A rucksack is more for, you know, when you do activities like um, sporting activities, you need to put more things inside here. Okay, let's listen to the interviewer.
Okay, so where is the interviewer with Andy? We know they are. Where are they when they're talking? Next to a mountain. Where's Andy from? What country does he come from? Scotland. And which objects are in his rucksack? We have, we can make a sentence. So <clears throat> in his rucksack, because remember now we know how to say it's his rucksack. We know how to talk about the object, the rucksack, and who it belongs to. It's not mine. It's not hers, it's not theirs or ours, it's his rucksack. So in his rucksack, there is, remember we did this, we're talking about singular objects, there is a camera, a first aid kit. So remember when we talk about singular objects, we need to put a or an. An is when you have the next word is A-E-I-O-U. Uh, gloves and a hat. Okay, so that is, they are the objects that are in his uh, rucksack. So I wanted to talk about this now, nouns. We have singular nouns and we have plural nouns. We know we have one or we have many. So we can have one book or many books. Now we have an S at the end of the plural. But the S could be maybe you add an S, maybe you add ES, maybe you add IES, VES, or maybe it's irregular. It breaks the rule and it has its own rule. So how do I know what the ending for the, plur for the plural of the noun? If the noun, remember the object, ends in a CH, S, or SS, then to make the plural, we add an ES. So, for example, church. That's one church, but many chur churches will be churches. If I have RY, or sorry, if the ending is a Y, then it's, I take off the Y and I put IES. So if I have the noun country, then the plural is countries, many countries. Okay, singular, plural. If I have a Y, but it's connected to a vowel, so a vowel is letters A, E, I, O, U. Then I need to put an S. I keep the Y and I put an S. So I don't change the Y. I just add an S. Okay, so this one was if the letter ends in a consonant. If the, the letter of the noun, the last letter, ends in an F or F-E, then I add V-E-S. So, for example, I could have a leaf. Um, so we can have a leaf and a plural, if there's many of them, leaves. Or I could have a knife. And the plural, knives. Okay, so that's how I need to know what the ending is. So we normally add S for number five. We normally add S. Uh, number two, we add something to nouns ending in CH, S, and SS. We normally add ES. We change nouns ending in Y after a consonant to IES. And we change nouns ending in F or FE to V-E-S. 
And some nouns are irregular. So that means that they break the rule, they have their own rule. Uh, for example, man. So man in the plural is men. Women, a uh, woman in the plural is women. Children, in the plural, is a child, is the singular. In the plural, is children, yeah. Or kid, is the same thing, kid, children, yes. So they break the rule. They just, you just have to learn, you remember, remember them. There's, just remember them. Okay, so that's irregular. They, they have their own uh, ending. So if we have map, what's the plural of map? Maps. Mobile phone? Mobile phones. Bottle? Bottles. Hat? Hats. Camera? Cameras. Life? Lives. City, cities, lunch, lunches, chair, chairs, wife, wives, party, parties, woman, women. Okay, they were the plural. So now I know how to talk about one object or many objects. So only the many objects, I must change the ending. I have to add these words. Okay, so when we talk about things that are in a place, so I want to talk about where something is, maybe. Um, I can say it depends if the object is close or far away. And if it's singular or plural. So I need to think of all these rules. So if it's singular, it's this. If it's close, near, or that because it's far away. I say these if it's singular, close to me. Uh, sorry, plural now. Sorry, I don't remember what I said. This is singular and these are plural. So these because it's close and those because it's far away. <clears throat> okay, so for example, I could say this laptop because I can touch it. It's close. If it's within reach, um, sorry, yeah, this book because it's close to you, this book. But that book, because it's far away, you can't touch it. It's that book over there. Okay, so we're still talking about only one object, but we need to know if the one that we're talking about is close, like this book. So if I said to you, okay, look at, look at this book, because uh, I'm touching it, it's close. Um, but everybody, look at that person over there. So if I want you to look at someone and they're far away, I have to say, look at that person. And the same in the plural. So maybe I've got many pens. So these pens are really good. These books are really good. Maybe I have lots and lots of books. But if it's over there, then those books, um, those windows are big. Okay, so we have an interview with Andy. Um, we heard the interview um, where we know now where he's from, um, what's in his rucksack. Let's listen to another interview, and we're going to hear him talk about the objects and asking questions about these, those, this, and that. Okay, so let's listen to to that and answer question eight.
So what we're doing is looking at the pronunciation now of this, the, those, these, and that. So this has a short it sound, this, but these has a longer sound. These are my books. These are my friends. Keys, the sound, keys. It, it's a short sound, it, it. Pink, it's a short sound, put ink. Green, sounds very long, green, big, short sound, but it, big, and read, has a very long E sound, read. Okay, so interesting words. So in the short pronunciation of the it, it's this, it, pink, Big. Can you hear the short it? It. But in this one, it's a long e sound, like these keys, green, and read. Okay. So that's just pronunciation of those words. Um, let's have a look at a conversation. It looks like, um, what are, so I can see are is a plural because it's not what is, so I must be talking about plural objects. So what are these? So I can't say the objects. I don't know what they are. I'm asking someone, what are these? This, number two, what do you think it connects to? This. This bag is Sally's because only one object, this bag is Sally's. We know how to use possessive when we talk about it's for someone. This bag is hers, it's Sally's. Those, so plural, those are their pens. Yep, plural. Those are their pens, someone, uh, many people. I'm talking about someone's. Number four is a question. What's no? What's that book? What's that book? So it's like saying, what's that book about? Uh, what's that book for if somebody brought a book what's the book for are are those your boots so plural question with the verb to be are those your boots that's that's my brother yep so singular, one person, that's my brother. Question, is, yeah, so singular, I'm talking about one object, is this torch Andy's? Again, that means does it belong to him? Is it his? Is he the owner of it? And the last one, these are... Andy's books, uh, gloves, yeah, plural, many. These are, so I can see that I'm connecting the right, um, this, that, these, those, if it's near or far, with the singular or plural of the nouns. So I need to think, is the noun singular or plural? Is it near or is it far away? Okay, so I'll just add that when we say um, the singular, this or that, we need to put a after the, uh, sorry, before the noun. So this 
is a, and then whatever that noun is, or that is a, whatever. So you really have to push this word here. Okay, so that is, then we have to say a, and then whatever the noun is. So we know we're talking about one object. This is a book. That is a window. Okay, so we really have to push the a when we speak about a single one object. But for the plural, um, we don't. You know, these are, um, if you want, you can say my, these are my books. You know, it's different. We don't have a. We have more like if you want to show that it's yours. These are my books or these are Sebastian's books. Or maybe, you know, these are, sorry, there should be an S here. These are books, maybe just in general. These are books or these are um, pens. Okay, so it's only the singular where we have to put that article. It's called an article. Um, so, ah. Now, remember, if the noun is a consonant, that means it it's, uh, or if it's a vowel, it ends in an A, E, I, O, U. So maybe we're talking about an apple. Then you must say an apple. Okay, so you have to use an. So that is an apple. That is an elephant. That is an iPhone. That is an um, orange. That is an um, I don't know you. But anyways, um, we have to be careful which one we need to use. So vowels, remember these were vowels? Um, so for these letters, we need to use an. Okay, so that was an important point that I thought we really have to talk about. And we need to push these letters because they're very short letters. So a or an. Okay, let's read an article together about global objects. So global means like worldwide, like the whole world. Uh, it's got something to do with the world. It's global objects. So I'll read first and then you can repeat after me. Okay, so ready? The Mini was a British car until 2000. Now BMW, a German company, is the producer of the Mini. But the car factory for the Mini is still in Oxford, England. There are 2,500 parts in the Mini. And they are from many different countries in Europe and North America. So what nationality is a car from a German company with international parts and from a factory in Britain? It's a global product. Okay, we have a bonnet. This is from a factory. In the Netherlands. But the company is Austrian. Roof. Part of the roof is from England. But the company is Spanish. Mirrors. 
These are from a factory in Germany, but the headquarters is in Canada. Uh, front and back bumper. These are from Britain, but the company is Canadian. Seats. Johnson Controls is an American company. They make the seat, the car seats in a factory in Britain. Engine. The Mini has got two different engines. There's a petrol engine and a diesel engine. The petrol en engine is English and the diesel engine is Austrian. Windows. The glass in the windows is from a company in France. But a factory in Belgium makes the windows. Wheels. The wheels aren't from one country. They are from two. There are different parts and Italian and German companies produce them. So just some words. Factory is where a place where objects are made. So you can have a big factory where they make cars or, you know, planes. Or you can have a small factory where they make maybe, you know, um, chocolate or something like that. Headquarters, that means the main office. That's where you will find um, all the, the, the people that you need to talk about that are in control of the company. Okay, so I'm going to give you a moment to reread it and answers questions two and three. So I'll just go through that again. Which country is the BMW from? We know it's from uh, Germany. Where are the parts for the Mini? Many different countries. Where is the factory? In Britain. But in the past, the Mini was a British car. Is that true or false? It's true. Yes, it was a British car. Yeah, a long, long time ago. So A, some parts are from Asia. True. So the Mini is a global product. It's from around the world, all the parts of it. Some parts are from Asia. False. No. The Mini is famous in Brazil. We don't know. The article didn't tell us that. We don't have that information. So C, we don't know. Maybe true, maybe not. Maybe not. I don't think. <laughs> um, this, the engines are from two different countries. That's true. Yeah. The seats are made in America. False. The seats are made in Britain. The windows are from a factory in France. False. No, false. Not France. Which country? The windows. Belgium. Belgium. Yes, not from France, but Belgium. There is also a Mini with an electric engine. Uh, false. No, because it said the engine is only petrol or diesel, but not electric. Not electric. Okay. Um. So let's. Um. We'll finish here because next lesson. I want to talk about countries and nationalities. So we're going to talk about the countries in the world and how the nationality is different to what a country is. So a country is like Australia, but a nationality is like saying Australian. Or a country is Colombia, 
but a nationality, his nationality is Colombian. So we're going to talk about countries and nationalities and the pronunciation with most of those. And also, um, we're going to look at prices and currencies. So when we have different countries, they have different types of money that they use. So we're going to talk about that and the way that we say the cost of an object. Um, okay, so we'll do that all next lesson.